Hello, cats. Hi. How are you doing? Very good. I'm Kirithm from the Kirithm blog, and I'm really pleased to meet you. Thanks. So first, you're a, a classically trained singer, uh, which means you can sing opera. Is yes, that correct? Yes, I'm a first soprano. Okay. Um, so this is quite unlikely for pop singers, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I, I, I know with myself, I had uh, classical training for four years. I did it in high school, but it was professionally trained. Okay. It was a, a school uh, for the arts, uh, okay. concentrating in classical music. Uh, but I don't, I don't know much. I know a lot of people, usually my age, don't really take... Uh, interest in opera. <laughs> okay, yeah, cool. Um, you've used a lot of operatic vocal runs on your first album, Nine Lives. Oh, I'm glad you noticed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's quite obvious. But um, yet you seem to have stopped using them. So, uh, why is that? I mean, no, no, I have not stopped. Uh, well, uh, I, I guess every album, and I've only had one album before this one. Yeah. So that's why you guys are like, oh. Um, but if you notice also, the thing is, Inside Out has two versions of the album, yeah. the European and the American. Yes, I have used a bit more opera in the American okay. than the yeah, European. European like, uh-oh. Okay. Um, but it, it was strategically for okay. my part because I wanted uh, my European version to be more of a party scene because when I come here, that's what I see and when I perform, I see that Europeans love to have a fun time. And when I'm back home, you know, yeah, we like hot, crazy dance club songs, but we also love our ballads and our you know, unique things like opera or like a rock, rock out pop song. Okay, that's, that's really cool. So, on um, your Facebook biography reads, Kat is said to have five octave um, vocal range, <laughs> Compar comparable to Mariah Carey and uh, Minnie Ripton. So, does that mean that you can reach the whistle register? Well, this is the thing. People always misconcept things. Uh, uh, I do have a lot of octaves, but an octave is just eight notes. Yeah. So it depends how many, you know, what's your range. Yeah. Um, so I do do have that. And I have, I believe, I, I love Mariah Carey. She's amazing. Yeah, uh, she is. One of the artists that I think could be incomparable to many right now vocally. Uh, and um, yes, I do believe that they have been very big inspirations to me. And be, that being said, that's why I took like an into opera. Okay. And <laughs> yes, and I went to find all that I have of the range. Now, in the future, I will be able to show that off more when I really concentrate and try to do probably an aria or an EP of uh, classical songs that oh, we already that will be know, really cool. or my own. But that's all in the future, you know, in the near future. <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, how hard is it, is it for you to convince label executives to sing in Spanish? Well, it varies. It really does vary. Uh, it depends where you're at. Uh, um, to tell you the truth, a couple of years ago, if I could want to say like five years ago, Latin influence music wasn't that popular in yeah. the uh, pop world, if you want to say that. Probably here in Europe, probably was a little bit more accepted, but it really wasn't. Uh, so when I came in 2007, and I came with this new sound that was very pop, electro, world, and then I added a little bit of a Latin flair to it, it was very new to people. Because people already knew reggaeton. And when they heard this sound, it was more like, wait, this is more mainstream. Because yeah. I'm American, but I'm yeah. Dominican. So I put a little bit of merengue, different stuff, yeah. bachata. Yeah, Caribbean um, vibe. And... Yes. And that being said, um, I took a risk. But sometimes it can be hard. To okay. Um, so you've basically brought your good friend Red One, uh, his first major international success hit yes. with uh, Wine Up. And uh, be uh, before he became an it producer with Lady Gaga, uh, how, this, how did this incredible success affect your relationship with him? Oh, no. Um, I think that him and I, we did something very grand for each other. Um, you know, we met each other and we had, both of us had our own dreams of aspiring. It's not a marriage, <laughs> you know, aspiring yeah. to be, you know, big acts within our own world. I think that together we created an amazing first album. Yeah, And true. it did what it did for both of us in our own, you know, separate ways. And I'm very happy for him for all the success that he has in soon to come. Okay. Honestly, <laughs> how do you truly feel about the new Jennifer Lopez song and video on the floor? Uh, do you think she ripped off your song Party O'Clock? Well, um, there's... You know, it's, I, when it comes to blame, and I don't like to blame, but I will say when I did hear the song, it was tragically similar to my song, especially um, when it comes to naming the songs. But yeah. it makes sense because we worked 
with the same producer, Red One, produced yeah. both songs, Party O'Clock, which was produced first, okay. and Verse On The Floor, which was second. So it's out there, it's yeah. what fans <laughs> think. And you know, I wish her the best. She's, you know, she's done good and has had a big career, as well as I'm aspiring to have one. But you know, back in the day, there was some reports saying that singer Brandy um, uh, felt like her collaborator, Dark Child, gave her sound to other female artists. Uh, do you think Red One and you are in the same, the same state? Well, right I now? think that in music that can happen, you know, when things get a little bit, you know, like the music industry is very small. That's what people yeah. don't really realize. And when things get all over the place, sometimes that can happen. I don't think that is done tragically in purpose, but it happens. But it's up to the artist how would you hail from that and thankfully you know i am the creative force behind my music before red one before any producer i was cat musically mentally i write my music after him i still will be cat so regardless of anything i love him you know to death for yeah. what we've done but i don't think that it was done in a way to like oh my god let's take over here. <laughs> i just think it happened you know it just happened because it was that way but again um it has happened before okay i can't tell you why their situation is that way but i can tell you my situation Okay. I have held from that, and I have a new single now, Dancing Tonight, which is amazing. It's produced by 86, a producer from GMB Productions, my musical production. And hey, last week it was just pronounced number one breakout song for the uh, Billboard dance charts in America. So I'm really excited um, for it. It's coming out here very soon also in France. So it's nothing but the best, you know? When one door, you know, closes, for me, like 10 more. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> one last question. Uh, you're probably aware of the backlash that Christina Aguilera received for uh, the, her performance of the, the American National well, you know, Anthem. I just feel that, uh, you know, we're artists, we're human. And you have to, this is a thing that people don't realize. When you're an artist, uh, so many things are put, you know, towards you. Um, we are, we have to have a chance to sometimes, you know, forget things or mess up. Um, yeah. But... The best thing, again, is how you as an artist pick yourself up from that. Okay. Um, so, could you sing something? Okay, well, I could sing. Yes, I will sing something for you. Oh, but I want to uh, sing. I want to sing. You want to sing, yeah? Can I pick? I, I want to pick what I want to sing. Yeah, yeah, okay. sure. Yeah. So, this is um, the new single. Okay. Baby, tonight, turn the music down. Because we'll be dancing, dancing, dancing. Set this floor on fire. Turn the floor higher. Everyone's dancing, dancing, dancing. We'll be dancing tonight. New single, get it? This old.